I'm going to first do a slide deck on um, something I've talked about in a couple different videos, but I've never really strung it together the way I'm about to do this. Um, and it has in part to do with those high sugars I had last week, uh, went under a lot of stress. Um, and then um, in, in conjunction with that, I have recently returned to the gym, which I, I was going to take a little break. I took like a six month break, <laughs> but life has seasons. So I'm back at the gym. And so I will post usually my glucose and ketones before I work out and after I work out, especially if I'm, if I'm fasting. So I think it's, again, it has created quite a few questions and I know I've tackled these at some point, but I probably have never done the full string like this. So, okay, here we go. Where does glucose come from? Uh, where does glucose come from? And specifically, where does the glucose come from when you're fasting? So if you haven't read my book any way you can, uh, I take a whole chapter to talk about where glucose comes from. And they use one of, one of the studies, the one I'm drawing out right here, to show that the, um, when the, the biggest place we get this data is from a study where they entered the, a hospital setting and we kept them for almost a month of fasting. Uh, the fasting data was not subtle. Uh, I mean, it was a powerful change on how we had documented this before. I do want you to look on, off on that left side. The blood sugar is milligrams per hour. This is a rate of burning it. They did not have a blood sugar of 400. It was that they were burning uh, glucose at 400 milligrams per hour. So uh, again, they're looking at metabolism for this test, really advanced testing for this. And they came in after eating. So they started testing right after they had a big meal. And so really burning up that glucose um, uh, is what is happening on that first phase of that first line. Uh, you'll see that that is what we call phase one. And when I wrote about the book, I really spent time unpacking each of these phases. What i like to show you next is in a completely fasted state, when you are on a ketogenic, not on a ketogenic diet, when you're on a standard American diet, your glycogen storages are going to be pretty heartily used up by the end of that second or third day. So 24 hours, getting into that 48 hours, um, you should have a pretty good amount of that glycogen storage used up. Um, phase uh, four and phase five turn into days. So at the end of this, it's 40 days. And you're going to see a word called gluconeogenesis, which is glucose made from proteins and glucose made from fat. And that part is becomes a really important discussion that is different when you're on a ketogenic diet. So as we look, this is what the picture looks like that's in my textbook. This is out of that study. And I like folks to look across that, um, that area that's the top uh, line where your glucose came from. And the, the glucose on phase one was their food and drink. The phase two is glycogen and a little bit of gluconeogenesis from the liver. By the end of two days, you know, by that phase three, the one that's highlighted in blue in this picture, um, you have more gluconeogenesis, but you're still getting some from your glycogen. By the time you get out to that end of that first week, into that second week, and by the end of that month, all of the sugar that you're finding is from um, making it from protein or fat. And that is a very special process that our body does in an advanced phase of, it, of ketosis. Um, the other part that I always like folks to look at is the bottom part, which is the glucose, uh, the brain fuel was glucose in phase one, glucose in phase two, glucose in phase three, and it wasn't until you get into that end of that first week where ketones become the primary fuel uh, for the brain. And um, there's a couple other videos that, uh, especially my little mini coming out this week is focused on some of, can we manipulate that using a different uh, option? I just want to remind people if you're new, glycogen, glycogen is a stored sugar. So in my videos, you'll see these little characters. Uh, they're supposed to be glucose. There's reasons they have different emotions, and that is that glucose can make us feel very happy, but it also can make our head foggy. It can make us sleepy uh, when it shoots too high. Your body does so much, has so many mechanisms built in to keep that glucose controlled that when I look at um, the glucose um, process, I think of it as different phases give you different emotions. Uh, but 
when you're looking at what is glycogen, if the sugar gets too high and your body says, hey, I want to store that for later, it makes those glucogen into kind of strings them together and tucks them in a little vacuole called glycogen. Um, we'll come back to glycogen in just a minute. But here is what we want to talk about. Where does glucose come from when you're on the ketogenic diet? So if you think back to that process that I just talked about, I, I'm going to really look at that two to 20 weeks um, on a ketogenic diet. And we're tr really trying to say, where does the, um, where does your, you know, when I was fasting last week for four days and people are saying, well, how in the heck can you have such high sugars when you're on day three? You must be eating sugar substitutes. You must be, you know, even if I was, ha I didn't have any sugar substitutes. I didn't, I was black coffee and water. And if you go back and look at my numbers, um, it really took me till the third day before my Dr. Boz ratio really went down. Um, and you say, well, where did it come from? And part of it was I was under a, a much higher stress than usual last week, and I had had a weekend of travel, so that added to my stress. And that cortisol keeps sending a message to your liver to say, any of those glycogen balls left, any of that stored sugar left, and it releases the glucose from storage if it's got it hidden anywhere. The liver is one place that you store it, but your muscles are also another place that you store it. When you get further out into the ketogenic part, if you continually monitor that you have um, that you have glucose, or that you're in ketosis, that your glucose numbers uh, are measured, I would like to think of uh, this as a Dr. Boz ratio of less than a hundred. Uh, it really gets you into that second month, you know, maybe sometimes at the end of the first month and onwards before I can really be confident that a lot of this glucose is coming from um, the fats and the proteins that you eat. And I would push much more towards the fats than the proteins, uh, knowing some of the other things we're not going to go into tonight. So we're going to do a quick review. Glycogen is those glucose molecules put into a capsule. A vacuole is a better way to look at it. They're inside your liver. Here's uh, one of the uh, um, places where we say the first place your body tries to store that extra sugar is in your liver. The highest metabolic phase, meaning the highest, um, the most charged mitochondria in your body are found in your liver. There is more metabolism that happens inside your liver than all other cells combined. It is the strongest place to predict metabolism. Uh, when it gets overloaded with sugar and is constantly on a glucose only uh, a fuel pilot, it find you will find the body becomes a much bigger liver. Well, the liver grows and grows and grows in hopes to keep storing this uh, sugar for a rainy day, um, a day when you don't eat so much. And in our culture today, that's not very that's not very common. So to say, well, how do you get rid of this? Um, when you stop eating, those glycogen balls uh, start to break down and share the glucose, and they put it back into your sh into your bloodstream. And as you do that, you start to empty out the glycogen uh, that you stored. It, it will fill right back up again if you eat too much sugar because your body does protect you from those high sugars by quickly storing glycogen again. If you have a really large liver, uh, it's lots of places you can store that glycogen again. So it can be this kind of stuck place uh, that they get into a stall where they've got a really large liver from 20 years of high blood sugars, even if they're not diabetic, even if they're pre-diabetic, and then they go on the ketogenic diet, but they really can't get that Dr. Boz ratio any lower without a little bit of fasting. Um, if you look at um, the other major deposit for where you can store all these sugars, and this is where my exercise in the last few weeks comes into play, the other place you store sugars is your muscle cells. So it's very easy to see why when your muscle cells need sugar, um, they would love to have that, that glycogen right next to the, to the mitochondria mitochondria for fuel, they'll take off and snip off a little bit of sugar and that lactate will then swim back to the liver and be processed in for some more energy. But we put lots and lots of stored sugar in our muscle cells. Uh, even though our liver is incredibly metabolically active because of the massive number of muscle cells throughout uh, the body, um, uh, throughout the system, you will find actually more storage of glycogen in your muscle cells than we have in our liver cells. So when I get to um, a phase where um, I'm doing my six months of uh, not going to the gym is over, uh, I've now started posting on Facebook again or posting on Instagram about, well, what is my sugar? 
Um, and the sugars pre and post workout have led to a lot of people saying, why is it so high? You're working out. Why did it go higher? And I, I just find it an incredibly good uh, or opportune teaching point to say, well, if I don't ever use those muscles, I have storage of that glycogen storage throughout my body, but I haven't really asked those muscles to turn on and increase their metabolism to use them. And it's when you do that that you can see um, the glycogen uh, storage from the muscles starts to decrease. And it's that regular use of those muscles that gets it even more, um, more uh, powerful reduction in your overall blood sugars and, again, your overall insulin, which is really what we're trying to, to reach for. All right. Please last... subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.